Good evening, Earth Science students. Uh, this lesson is combining a few lessons on uh, precipitation, weather instruments, and storms. All right, use your guided notes uh, for this, All right, and just pay attention. All right, so there are six types of precipitation. Um, all dealing with temperature too. All right, so if the temperature is above 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius, it would rain or drizzle. And the only difference, the main difference between the two is that rain or is rain would be bigger or larger droplets, drizzle, smaller droplets. Um, snow occurs when you have, uh, when the temperature is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. Um, sleet is a transition um, in temperature. Freezing rain is when when it falls as rain and it freezes upon contact with the Earth's surface where the temperatures are below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. And you have hail um, which occurs with the cumulonimbus cloud. And this type of cloud is very th it's the thickest cloud of them all. Um, and it could be some variation in temperature in the cloud. All right, so as I mentioned before, uh, rain occurs when you have liquid droplets right above 32. Um, we have uh, drizzle, very smaller droplets uh, above 32. We have uh, we have snow, which is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we have sleet. So first it falls down as rain, so it's above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but the temperature in the atmosphere is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Alright, so you have these ice pellets as sleet, and they may bounce on the surface. Another one here is that it falls as rain droplets. The cloud in atmosphere is above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, however, um, as you can see, the ice builds up on telephone poles, which is below 32, the wires, which is below 32, and the Earth's surface. Um, freezing rain is one of the worst hazards because of black ice. Alright, last one is your hail. Um, this is called a cumulonimbus cloud. It's a very thick cloud from, from, uh, from bottom to top and this type of cloud there's a transition in temperature where it's above 32 degrees Fahrenheit it's in a liquid form and when it slips up below 32 degrees Fahrenheit uh, it changes into ice and it goes into liquid form and ice and eventually it builds up these layers upon layers upon layers so if it goes back and forth numerous times you can have really large hailstones if it only goes up like one, once or twice, you're dealing with like very small hailstones, like um, you know maybe the size of uh, an eraser at the end of your number two pencil. All right, with instruments, number one, thermometer, of course, measures temperature in Fahrenheit, Celsius, or Kelvin. Um, barometer used for air pressure, and on page thirteen. Of the ESRT, it, it's it's in millibars or inches of mercury. Number three, anemometer used to measure wind speed. Um, you can see those on top of houses. They're like cups that capture the wind, and it and it rotates around. Wind vane is a uh, compass direction. You can find that on top of many buildings. Rain gauge that's used to collect liquid water. And the sling psychrometer, the one I demonstrated uh, in class, has two temperature gauges. And um, one has the wet bulb, one has the dry bulb. And that's going to help us measure the relative humidity and the dew point temperatures. Um, that exercise we did is on page 12 of the ESRT. All right, so here's the instruments. You have thermometer. We have our pressure. So if there's a lot of pressure pushing down on the mercury, it will rise inside. All right, so it'll give you a high pressure. 
when there's less pressure um, in the atmosphere, um, this stuff in this cylinder can begin to be pushed down because of gravity, and you would have a lower pressure. We have these cups here for an anemometer. We have our wind vanes right here. We have our precipitation gauge where this would collect uh, precipitation. And the last but not least, we have a sling psychrometer. Right? We have a wet bulb and dry bulb. Right? So here's your wet bulb, and here is your dry bulb. All right. Uh, last but not least, are your storms. We have our hurricanes, uh, tornadoes, thunderstorms, and blizzards. All right. So. Um, hurricanes. We experience a lot of hurricanes here along the uh, along the Atlantic coast coastline. We do experience tornadoes every now and then. Uh, tornadoes usually occur in central part of the U.S. Um, thunderstorms usually have a lot of that in the summertime, and we have a lot of blizzards, of course, during the winter time. All right, so hurricanes, these are winds exceeding um, 74 miles per hour or greater. Um, okay, tornadoes are very high wind speeds, a little pressure, also known as a funnel cloud. Um, it also forms with a cumulonimbus cloud, a thunderhead cloud. Uh, thunderstorms, uh, we have lightning and thunder. All right, heavy rain and so on, and blizzards. Um, one of the key things with blizzards is low visibility, right? Very hard, very difficult to drive in. All right, so some bullet points for hurricanes. Uh, we have hurricane season lasting from June to November. Um, hurricanes can originate many, originate many places. One place is the Atlantic, uh, Atlantic Ocean and Pacific Oceans. Uh, we have the Caribbean Sea. Um, where they can originate from, and um, once these hurricanes, if they originate in the Pacific, and they move toward like Japan, uh, they're no longer called hurricanes; they're called typhoons. So typhoons and hurricanes are similar; they're synonymous. Um, hurricanes get their energy from warm ocean water. Um, all these warm ocean currents are found on page of the ESRT. Uh, the cooler ocean currents will reduce the amount of energy and also if it travels on land that would reduce the amount of energy. Um, hurricanes can last for a week or so and we use the Saffir Simpson scale to measure hurricanes. Alright, so Saffir Simpson scale we have categories 1 through 5. Um, category 1 is 74 miles per hour. Um, and category 5 is greater than 155 miles per hour. We have the damages, minimal, moderate, extensive, extreme, catastrophic. Um, and we have storm surge. Um, how high the ocean or sea level is in comparison to the norm. Right, so, for instance, for category 3, it would be 9 to 12 feet above normal sea level crazy. All right, Hurricane Katrina was a hurricane at category 5, greater than 18 feet above sea level. All right, that's like that's like th at least maybe three Mr. Rankins, one on top of the other. Hurricane anatomy, we have the eye, the eye wall, and several bands of thunderheads, as we can see down here. Uh, the eye is the center, and in the eye, if you travel through an airplane and you go past into the eye of the hurricane, it's actually in beautiful weather conditions. And believe it or not, there's high pressure happening there. And um, so with high pressure, we have cool air very dense and it sinks and that, that happens in the eye and then eventually gets pushed out to to make all these thunderheads all these bands of of um, storms basically 
All right, the I uh, I will a ring of towering thunderstorms where most severe weather occurs. And remember, it's it's a low pressure. It's northern hemisphere, so it goes inward and counterclockwise. All right, uh, tornadoes, um, funnel clouds. So with tornadoes, uh, we're looking at um, hurricane, or I'm sorry, take it back, tornado alley, which is the central part of the U.S. And this happens where you have differences in air masses. So we have a CP, which is very dry and cool, meeting a warm, which is your T, and your moist maritime air masses. When these two meet, um, these would produce your tornado conditions. And it happens in the central part of the U.S. for the most part. Um, they're extreme. They're the most violent storms that we have. And... We don't. We no longer use the Saffir Simpson scale. We use the Fujita scale. Um, and one major thing here uh, with tornadoes is that uh, with hurricanes they can last a week. With tornadoes, they only last a few hours, or maybe even, even like a few minutes. Very short. All right. Uh, this is the enhanced Fujita scale um, based on current conditions that we have. Maybe perhaps global warming. We have differences in. In temperature, we have an EF of O down to EF of 5, and this is exceeding 200 miles per hour pretty fast. We have minor all the way down to massive, incredible damage. Um, I mean, total houses can be out of their foundations, just no longer there. And of course, same thing with, with the Saffir Simpson scale when you go from EF0 to EF5. Or if you go from a Saffir Simpson scale 1 to 5, you're decreasing your pressure. Right. Uh, thunderstorms occur in a three stage process. We have developing, mature, and dissipating. Uh, for the developing, um, cloud formation is increasing. So we have, a, we have a lot of air masses that rise because of uh, low density. So warm, moist air rises. It cools um, because it expands. It meets the dew point temperature, and you have a lot of cloud formation. Eventually, it develops into a big, large vertical cloud called a thunderhead. All right, mature. Now, this thunderhead, this cumulonimbus cloud, forms. Um, we have an, a lot of up and down air movement. Notice we have a lot of hail. We could have hail for this. Strong winds, uh, lightning. And dissipating is now rainfall decreases. The extent of this cumulonimbus cloud decreases. It gets smaller. All right, it can last for 10 to 20 minutes. Um, tornadoes can also form from, um, from these thunderstorms because we do have cumulonimbus clouds. All right. Um, Hurricanes also have numerous thunderstorms around the eye and eye wall as, as a correlation. So we have the beginning part, right, the towering cumulus cloud, and eventually it develops into a large anvil shaped cloud, which is your cumulonimbus cloud, and then eventually it dissipates, and your thunderstorm will, will diminish. Blizzards um, have strong winds and much snowfall, uh, reducing visibility, very hard to drive in. Um, blizzards occur along frontal movements of mid-latitude cyclones. All right, remember, fronts occur where you have a difference in temperature, warm versus cold, or cold versus warm. So you have warm fronts, you have cold fronts, um, you have occluded and stationary. Um, blizzards usually occur when you have when you have a cold front. All right, blizzard conditions on the LIE. Right, we have this was a while ago. A lot of cars were getting stuck on the LIE. Um, storm hazards, hurricanes, uh, rise. 
rise in ocean water near shorelines, cold storm surge, uh, results in flooding, um, hurricanes and tornadoes, we have high wind speeds, uprooting of trees, damage of residences and commercial buildings, um, also has a lot of flying debris, which can actually hurt and da hurt people, it can damage houses and buildings, and it's like almost like missiles, like projectiles. Um, thunderstorms, you have flooding, hail, high winds, and lightning, blizzards, shut down of all types of transportation, um, disrupts telephone electrical service. And to be prepared um, for this, um, prior planning by individuals, families, communities, and government agencies to design evacuation routes out of the area to a safer to a safer area within a building. Um, some things that you should include, non-perishable food items and fresh water, of course. Um, batteries for flashlights and radios. You have to have a heat source. Um, perhaps a port something that's portable. Um, a backup electrical power. Perhaps a generator. You should board up your windows in case of uh, high wind speeds. Uh, for thunderstorms, do not stand under, under a tall tree. Um, if you are outdoors, your car is usually the safest place to be in. And if you're inside a building, do not touch electrical devices or use water. Uh, for blizzards, stay indoors. Um, okay, otherwise people could suffer from frostbite, which is um, you're, you would kill your skin cells. You can get hypothermia and freeze to death. All right, to sum up this, we're going over the six types of precipitation, um, the six types of weather instruments, the details of a hurricane, tornado, thunderstorm, and blizzard, um, the hazards, um, with the storms listed in three, and how to prepare for these storms listed in number three. All right, so um, you got a note should be filled in, and um, be ready for some questions for tomorrow's class. And thank you for your time, and uh, see you tomorrow.